different than the um, limit proofs. You feel it? It's like I try to explain it to someone like algebra pulls a different part of my mind. It's, it's like puzzles, like when you're doing logic puzzles, that's what it feels like. At least that's the closest I can describe it. I like them both. I think I like this one better when I'm doing it. But then when I'm doing uh, real analysis, I think I like that better. And that's been my problem. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. I got mine last week. I'm still reeling. So again, this is the only rule I can use. So what I, I'm going to do is if I, I want to start with A, little a belonging to H, I have to show A inverse belongs to H. So I already proved that identity is in there. So I'm going to set capital A equal to identity and capital B equal to A. And I get this. And what's this? It's just right because identity leaves things un unchanged. By definition of identity, you can just always look, refer back to that backboard that it's all up there. Yeah. Could you solve it in another way, saying since I know that any A times an inverse of any other number is in the element, then I know that A times, if I replace B with A, then A times A inverse is also in the element. And if you prove the closed property, then... Yeah, well, I haven't proved the closed property. So you could probably... Do I don't know. I, the way I did it, I did the closed property. Based on this? Yeah, I think I did. No, no, yeah, I did. I used this property to prove the closed property. So you could probably go the other direction, you know? Like sometimes I prove something one way, and the next day I change my hairstyle and I do it a different way. So it's possible. I was just wondering. Huh? I was just wondering because I had I, thought of. You could that. probably do that. I just uh, I, I, I didn't do it that way. <laughs> but tomorrow is a different day, so I might do it a different way. That's why I have notes here because I, you know, sometimes I might glue together two different ways to do it that have nothing to do with each other. Recall that I'm only allowed to use this property here. Yeah, you know, I, I was just driving up this morning, I was thinking to do that, and I, I forgot to do it again here. So I abused my letters. Okay. <coughs> um, no, right here. 
So that's why I proved them in this order. So I could use one to get the other. Okay, look at your sheet and see if you've got it all filled out and if it made sense. Oh, uh, yeah, so I use this property right here. Since I, I proved this already, I'm able to use it. So if I start out with a B and H, then the inverse on number 13. But 14 is a using fact that should probably be true. That one, B inverse inverse is B. All right, I, I asked you something at the end of that sheet. Um, it occurred, like, I've never done it like this before. The closest I've done was in a pre-calc class, I was using a clicker, and I did something on the board, and I turned around and asked them, do you guys get it on the clicker? And, like, 80% of the class said no. I'm like, oh, well, I guess I was having a math party up here by myself. So um, I thought this might be a way because I think it's hard, it's hard to pay attention, really focus when you're sitting there. Um, and so this will force you kind of to follow along and it forced me, like I had to change things along my proof to, to make it more accessible. So um, another faculty member was already asking me, like, is this going to work? Like we can ask you guys, like, what do you think? Would it work like if you're teaching differential equations maybe and doing something that's really complicated and having every little stop point like asking, hey, did you get this? Instead of having everyone take notes straight and direct, have them just, just do checkpoints along the way to see if everybody's got it. 